You know, it absolutely boggles my mind just how complicated football has to make playoff systems. In Canada, you had teams five and four play each other. And then the winner of that one played the third place team. And the winner of that one played the winner of the first and second place teams. I think, no, the loser of the first and second place teams. And the winner of that played the first place team to win it all. Thought it would be different in Costa Rica? Nope. And welcome back one and all to the American Dream. This is episode number 46. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. I am Mr. Cellophane. If you missed the last episode where we actually got to the playoffs, go back and check that one out. It was a doozy. Blissfully, we came out on top. So now we are in the playoffs. We've qualified for the semifinal. We're taking on Herediano. It's a two-legged affair. The winner of the semifinals qualify for the final. However, because we came in first place, we also qualified for the grand final, except the winner of the final qualifies for the grand final. So if we win our semifinal, we play in the final. And if we win the final, we're in the grand final, but we're already in the grand final. So who are we playing? Oh boy, I never thought I would long for the days of the playoff playoff semifinal. I honestly feel like this kind of thing is going to make my brain melt. Before yours does, make sure that you hit like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you have not, if you've been enjoying this series so far. Thank you very much. Freddy Gonzalez will be unavailable for the first leg against Herediano. Picked up a yellow card in the last match. He has been suspended for this one. Fantastic. As has Daniel Herrera. So going into this playoff match, which probably doesn't matter anyway. Maybe it'll get us home field in the... I'm, I'm hurting my brain again. Uh, Daniel Herrera also suspended. So both of our fullbacks unavailable for the next match. And add another player to the list of those that will be unavailable for this match. And that's our starting goalkeeper, Manuel Cortez. Undergoing treatment for a twisted ankle he suffered in training just two days before the match. Expected to be out two to four weeks. Yay. He won't be available for either leg of the matchup against Herediano. In its own way, I'm feeling like it's okay because I'm fairly certain that this tie actually doesn't really mean anything for us, except it would give us some nice momentum as we move toward the grand final. David Hernandez is going to get the start in goal because somebody has to with Cortez out. Casada Thorne is going to move on back as our left back. Taylor's going to come in on the right side. Innocente and Gubane are going to man the middle of our back four. Aquista and Chacon will be in the midfield. Marrera is going to be at the 10. The wingers will be Ramon and uh, Guillermo Sanchez, while Esteban Cordero passed the fitness test. He is going to start as our striker. I don't know. I feel like it would be super swell if we had some idea of what was actually happening right now, but much like most of this save, we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants and <laughs> going with the flow because I just don't know what this tie is going to mean. Obviously, if Herediana wins, they're going to move on and participate in the final. Do we have to participate in the final if we win or is Herediano going to get through either way? I don't know. Uh, early opportunity, though, for them just a little over a minute in, but a great save by David Hernandez as he looks to put an early stamp on this match off the corner. Playing it behind, Perigini is going to get another shot, this one from the other side. Alfaro can't get his head on it. Azofi for the Vargas, and that's going to trickle through a bunch of bodies and ricochet out for yet another corner. So third corner of the match already in the first two minutes and change for Herediano as they continue to put the pressure on. Fernandez looking to send it back post. Coming out is Hernandez, but it looks like Rafael Hernandez put his hand on the ball, and it's going to be a free kick for Saprisa. It's been all Herediano in the early going. The other match is between Alajuense and Punta Arenas. Punta Arenas in the ninth minute, picking up a goal. So they are leading on the road in the first leg of that semifinal by a score of one to nil. No score here. Not a single shot on goal yet for Saprisa. We've played almost 30 minutes of this match. Make that one. We finally got one off. So we're going to demand more from our team again does it really even matter what the result is Ramon with the corner kick look how wide this pitch is holy shnikes and Ronald Gabane pushed by Alfaro penalty has been called and finally Saprisa with an opportunity to take a lead in this match Cordero steps up delivers beats Rivas to his left Cordero's right 17th goal of the season coming from the penalty spot and 37 minutes in it is Herediano nil 
Suprisa won. Beautiful delivery. Nice calm demeanor from Cordero as he delivers with his left foot. And all of a sudden, the XG just gets automatically flipped. Although possession really tilted in Herediano's favor. But at the half, we do have the 1-0 lead. And our team appears to be playing decently well. Although, as you can see from the heat map, our average position with the ball, we're, we're a little bit more compact than you would think a team that is designed to play as wide as we do. Alfaro picking up the loose ball. We've played just over 10 minutes in the second half. Gubane is going to clear it. Sanchez won't catch up to it. Valverde will get there first. To his left, Hernandez. Vargas will spin. Look to push it past his man, Taylor. He does. Fernandez in the box. Into the middle for Perigini. And Perigini poking it home with his left foot for his 24th goal of the season to tie it up at one. I mean, I really did kind of feel like it was just a matter of time before Herediano got one back. They have certainly gotten their opportunities. We're playing with the backup goalkeeper. Our third string choice, uh, David Shamaro, is unhappy. He wanted more playing time. He wanted to be sold. Obviously, we can't sell him right now, but we did tell him that if somebody came in with an offer, we would let him go. Because frankly, at five foot eight or whatever he is, or with his eight jumping reach or aerial reach, he just... Uh, isn't our type of player. Quesada pulled Quesada Thorne, excuse me, pulled down. Second penalty opportunity for Saprisa. Can Cordero deliver just like he did in the first half? He'll step up left foot, gets Rivas to go the wrong way. It's a Radiano one, Saprisa two. I do feel a little guilty taking off a player now sitting on a hat trick off, but with Cordero just coming back from injury, we don't want to take any chances. Ramon is going to slot up as our striker. We brought in Johnny Castro on the right-hand side, which means Guillermo Sanchez flipping over to the left as we look to restart play with 20 minutes left to go. Leading 2-1, to one, we only have the five shots on goal. Four of them, however, on target. Herediano managing five on the target. They've taken 14. They're dominating in possession. The XG is... Fairly even, which is a bit surprising considering we have had the benefit of the two penalties. Final third throw in Taylor, Chacon, Castro playing it into the box, but Alionov is going to take over. Moyano throwing it forward, finds Rafael Bilu. Bilu still with it as Taylor tries to track back and cut him off. He will knock it away. Fernandez picks it up. Looking back post Perigini, his header just a little bit too high will go over the bar and ultimately not test Hernandez. And with just uh, four minutes being added on by the fourth official, I think that we are going to escape with a 2-1 victory. An escape we did. A pair of penalty deliveries from Esteban Cordero. The difference, Perigini picking up a goal, his 24th for Herediano. It was not enough. And we head into the home leg with a 2-1 aggregate lead. Really hoping we'll be able to do a little bit more from open play. Relying on penalties does not make me feel very comfortable. Now, Punta Arenas, also with the 2-1 aggregate lead over Alajuanese. What I have discovered is that if we were to win, we will go through to the final against, obviously, the winner of Alajuanese and Punta Arenas. My guess would be that if we do go through to the final and we win the final, whoever we beat, we would then repeat in the grand final unless they just consider the final the grand final. But again, something that we will see when and if it comes up. Again, can't really let myself get bogged down in things that I don't yet understand. We're just going to have to see how they play out. Ready for the second leg. It is at home. We've got Gonzalez and Herrera back. So they are back in at their normal fullback positions. Hernandez did a Pretty good job only letting up the one goal after he was essentially assaulted, especially relative to the number of shots we got off. So he's going to get his second consecutive start in the net. Uh, Gubane is going to pair with Taylor as we're going to give Innocente the afternoon off. Akista will pair with Braun as we give Emmanuel Chacon the afternoon off. He will be on the bench. Moreira will once again be manning the 10. Quesada Thorne is going to slide up as our left wing. Ramon's going to get the start on the right-hand side. And for the second consecutive match, he scored two goals. Yeah, they were both penalties, but they still count the same. It's going to be Esteban Cordero. Kind of this mess around and find out moment. If we win, we find out what happens. If we lose, we find out what happens. I mean, if we were to lose this match and the tie, we obviously wouldn't move on to the final. That would be Herediano. But we've already qualified for the grand final because we came in first place in the closing stage. So 
how is that going to affect us? Does that affect us? And if it doesn't affect us, why the devil are we even playing this match? If we qualify for the grand final, the first place seed, fine, go straight through to the grand final. Have the second, third, fourth, and fifth place teams qualify for this section of the playoffs. Or if you're only going to qualify the four teams, have just the one semifinal to meet the second place team who automatically qualifies for the final. Oh my God, I'm suggesting that they do things like they did in Canada, and I thought that was weird the first time. From the free kick, sent away, but Marrera will track it down. Akista, in a little bit of traffic, does have a tiny bit of dribbling room, finds a lane to Ramon. It will be cleared away. Casada Thorne gathering it just on his half of the pitch. Ramon can't get his head on that one. Arias will play it into the Saprisa end once again. Taylor, Akista, up to Casada Thorne in the middle. Marrera had Casada Thorne cutting through, but he decided to take it himself. Not the best decision. It sails over. And we'll go out for a goal kick. We've got four shots on goal in the first five through the first 40 minutes of this match. None of them have hit the target. And I was kind of hoping, yep, see, there it is. There's our first one. It was a bit of a weak header, kind of falling away from Cordero. Can't really fault him for it. He was trying to keep the ball in. Saw an opportunity, wanted to take advantage. Ball cleared, but settled down by Mbane. Brown. Quickly ahead for Ramon across Akista. Marrera in possession. Three men around him. Feeds it through. Casada Thorne into the box. His cross is blocked. Second attempt comes to Cordero, but they'll just lay it back for Braun, who will play it to Gubane as we look to reset the offense. Gonzalez in. Can't pick out Ramon as Rivas will come off his line and grab it just at the edge of the six-yard box. Drop it down. And booted away. Rafael Blilu can't get there. Casada Thorne quickly. Marrera Cordero around the side. Ramon, he may have been offside. The flag stays down. Ramon taking it deep. Knocked away by Hernandez. And a penalty has been called. We've scored two goals off of penalties and a shot at a third in this tie. If we score all of our goals off of penalties... It feels a little bit like cheating, but that's just the rules of the game. And Cordero will slide it home into the top corner. 19th goal of the year. Third consecutive goal scored. It's a Prisa 1. And Herediano nil. Rivas once again choosing poorly. I guess to be fair, Cordero did go to that side last time. But 1-0 is your score at home. And yeah, we're not really doing much. From open play, I think we need to do a little bit better. We're still winning the match, and we're still getting chances, and we are still playing generally well, just unable to finish, except from the penalty spot. But if we keep getting those chances, then all we need to do is take advantage of them. Thrown forward, can't find Cordero. Comes to Quesada Thorne, moving it to his right foot, and there he is, Elian Quesada Thorne, answering my prayers with his 12th goal of the year to make it 2-0 Saprisa. I have made no bones about the fact that I truly believe that from what I say out loud can be heard and interpreted by football managers. Usually when I say positive things like, oh, we're playing so well, we end up turning the ball over and, or making a bad play or just a terrible shot on goal. Steven Akista with his fourth of the year, it's now 3-0 and we are running away with this match. I was figuring if I was complaining long and hard enough about our inability to make anything happen in open play, football manager would finally go okay you know what i'll show you and for that i say thank you very much fm24 because as a result we are now running away with this tie it's 5-1 on aggregate we're going to make some changes just going to replace those with the tired legs johnny castro uh, will come in in place of diego morera stefan akista has had a good game he scored a goal but he is knackered, so Emmanuel Chacon is going to come out. These these matches were played three days apart, and obviously some of these guys played in both sides of uh, both legs of the match. We're even going to give uh, Daniel or Hugo Cordero another opportunity to shine. So we'll make three changes. Sixty four minutes into the match, it'll come after this free kick that Braun is going to take. We're keeping two men back, so we are outnumbered in the box by Herediano. Anytime now. I have not, by the way, told them to do any kind of time wasting. Braun was choosing to do that on his own, and he took all that time to take that shot. I am immensely disappointed. We have held Herediano to only two shots on goal, just the one on target. It came like 10 minutes into this match. They are still leading 
in the possession battle, although we have done a better job with that than we did in the last match. We've ticked down to final the final 10 minutes of the match, and I think Arediano has just pretty much given up as we have packed it in. 3-0 is your score with about a minute of stoppage time left. Hernandez sending it forward. Herediano looking to control. Chacon knocking it away. But Herediano able to get it back. Ramirez will drop it to uh, Koulibaly. Moyano ahead. Perigini tries to push it past his man. We'll feed it wide to Rafael Bilou. Bilou's cross partially blocked. And that will just harmlessly be scooped up by Hernandez. And I think... Unless this highlight continues, I think that's going to do it. I mean, it's, it's a foregone conclusion. We're up 5-1 on aggregate, 3-0 on the night. There's 30 seconds left. I don't think that there's a chance of Herediano doing much of anything. Ball wide. Castro putting the header on and just unable to tuck it inside that near post. And there we finally get the final whistle. 18-4, to your shots on goal in favor of Saprisa. We got another penalty goal from Esteban Cordero, but finally in the second half, finding a way to score from open play. Elian Quesada Thorne, Steven Aquista, each picking up goals. 3-0 and a 5-1 aggregate victory. At the end of the day, it was emphatic. So it will be Punta Arenas in the final. They won the second leg by a score of 2-1, to one, putting them up 4-2 on aggregate. Now, when we look at our schedule, though, the only matches that are listed are the matches against Punta Arenas. We are starting with a home leg. We are going to be favorites in that match. Mm, heavy favorites? I don't know, but we appear to also be favorites in the away leg. We, we did pretty well against Punta Arenas. Uh, throughout the season, as we look at the uh, the recent history, I, I proved myself wrong. <laughs> we uh, lost 3-1 and drew 1-1, a one note. So of the last four matches that, that happened within this season, we went 1-2-1. and one. So I stand corrected on that. But back to the schedule, can we get an idea of what happened in the opening stage? No, because we have the semifinal and then the grand final. So we didn't even play in the... Oh, because we lost the semifinal, but we qualified for the grand final. Oh, I could have just looked at this first and figured it out. We made the grand final. We're also put in the semifinal against Perez Zeladon, who surprisingly were able to beat us on aggregate 4-3, to three, considering how we treated them in the closing stage. A bit surprising, to be perfectly honest with you. So we we avoided the final. Perez Zeladon lost to Cartagines. Cartagines then met us in the grand final. So I think we're going to end up with four consecutive matches against Punto Arenas. And we're going to bring at least two of them to you in the next episode. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you have not or if you are brand new. And if you are, welcome in. I hope you enjoy your stay. I will see everybody tomorrow. It is the Primera de Vidion closing stage final first leg coming up. I hope to see you then. Until tomorrow, everybody, bye-bye.